Hey, C. Spreadsky here. As always, Canadian real estate market update. We particularly focus on Vancouver. If you get any sort of value entertainment out of these videos, all I ask you to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Questions, comments, put those below. Uh, I want to touch this week on some of our comments on the Looney Hour podcast. Again, if you're not listening to that, I highly encourage you to go check it out. Uh, but basically, we talked about the Bank of Canada's upcoming rate hike on June 1st. We're all in unanimous agreement that the Bank of Canada will raise rates by 50 basis points in June. So obviously, that's going to have a somewhat immediate impact, I think, on the housing market uh, beginning in June, because a lot of that, again, is psychological, right? People just, most people just read headlines, they pick up, you know, the global news, newspapers, they say, oh my gosh, rates are going up, they just raised 50 basis points, and by the way, who the hell is to this Tiff Macklem guy? Uh, that's your average, you know, the bulk majority of the Canadian population. Of course, for those of you that are watching this channel, you're a little bit more tuned, on, tuned in, you already know this is, this is coming down the pipe. And uh, we actually just had some additional comments, which I think are kind of interesting and, and very relevant to this week's video uh, from former Bank of Canada Governor David Dodge. So not only do most people not know who Tiff Macklin is, most don't know who David Dodge is. Well, he was, again, the Bank of Canada Governor from 2001 to 2008 and his recent comments here on monetary policy. The Canadian housing market is, uh, has been under scrutiny by politicians from both sides of the aisle. Uh, it's indisputable that the housing prices uh, across the country have risen dramatically over the last two decades. Uh, do you think the Central Bank of Canada, though, has had any role to play in asset price inflation? We know that speculative money coming sure. from foreign direct investments have played a role, but do you think central banks have also played a role? Sure. Of course they have. Uh, and, and they played a, a very strong role, a uh, very strong role in 2020, intentionally, intentionally, in order to avoid a real problem at that point in time. So the question then uh, remains, did, have they moved fast enough uh, in the course of 2021, in particular the second half of 2021, to remove that accommodation. And I think the answer was they were too slow uh, in removing that accommodation. Ah. Um, and they will now have to move more quickly uh, than uh, they might otherwise. And we might have to do, endure a, slight, a slightly longer period of slightly higher interest rates. So again, what David Dodge is basically saying is kind of what I've been arguing, which is the Bank of Canada should have begun raising rates over a year ago uh, when the housing market was clearly already well on its way to being out of control, but the economy had clearly basically already rebounded. So they waited too long. So now we have to basically play catch up. So we're playing catch up now moving forward. So that's why they have to do these jumbo size 50 basis point rate hikes and try to aggress aggressively clamp down inflation expectations. Uh, because one of the things that we have to kind of keep an eye on here is the pressures in the labor market, right? The economy is, is basically too tight. And so you have a situation where uh, Canada's small firms are citing labor shortages as primary growth constraints. There's not enough people to work in the labor force. Uh, and so this ultimately then creates, you know, uh, you know, a lot of not enough supply of, of workers and a whole bunch of demand for those workers equates to, i.e., wage growth. And that's really what we're seeing is you're actually seeing uh, scenario unfold right now where people are actually opting to leave their existing jobs they're opting to switch companies because they're able to get and negotiate much higher salaries because the companies that are hiring today are forced to hire at prevailing market rate salaries and those salaries are obviously higher because there's a huge demand for the shortage of workers in the market today and so you're actually seeing a lot of backlash from these unions and these uh, public uh, public companies where they're only giving their existing employees, you know, one and a half to two and a half percent annual wage growth. Uh, when again, inflation's running at 30 year highs north of 6% and the private sector, uh, which is aggressively trying to hire is, is running into a situation where they are forced to actually offer higher wages. And that's ultimately fil filtering through into the rental market. I mean, all you have to do is look at the rental markets across many of these major markets in Canada, you know, particularly where I am here in Vancouver. I mean, the rental market is red hot. Rents are way up uh, over the past 12 months. And again, a lot of that is because based on the local economy, I think there's a lot of wage growth happening 
and I think the labor market is extremely strong. And that is really the, the main component to the rental market. It's much different than the resale market, which I think is dependent on sort of liquidity driving markets and uh, you know some, some irrational exuberance to help propel prices higher. And in the rental market, a lot of it just comes down to the strength of the labor market. And that will dictate where your rent, rents are going to go. So, I mean, at least the positive thing if you're a landlord is that while you might be facing higher debt servicing costs through rising mortgage rates, you're going to have uh, rising rents to at least partially offset a lot of that, a lot of those increases. Uh, but I also want to get to some, some further comments here from David Dodge, who really, again, talks about the Canadian housing market and where he sees it going, uh, given where interest rate policy is going as well. So let's clip to that right now. There are speculations from uh, market participants, investors. RBC, for example, has uh, recently uh, put out a report saying that they expect the market, the housing market, to cool off somewhat in Canada, across Canada, especially the large metropolitan cities, Toronto, Vancouver, for example. Is that a view that you share? Um, I, I'm not a, a housing price expert, and so I, I want to be careful here. But undoubtedly, raising rates uh, will have a cooling impact on the, on the housing market. Absolutely, it will. Um, whether it will, if, rate, if the policy rate goes to 3%, let's say, meaning mortgage rates basically go to five or five and a half, um, uh, will that uh, cause a dramatic uh, uh, move in prices? Uh, I think that's hard to judge. Um, and all one can say is that the move up uh, in 2020 and 2021 was so much that taking back, yes. if you will, taking back some of that rapid escalation uh, through price decreases, month over month price mm -hmm. decreases, is probably uh, probably going to happen and is probably more. So again, David Dodge is talking about, you know, a pullback in, in national home prices that we have to see these month over month declines. Of course, if you watched last week's video, you already know that national home prices declined for the first time in two years last month. So the first national home price decline since April of 2020. Uh, so th those price declines are already playing out. And of course, it's more pervasive uh, in certain segments of the market, such as the GTA and the Vancouver suburbs, where most of the frothiness was. Um, but what's important to understand is how this is going to play out into the investor sentiment, because investors are a huge driver of this market, right? I mean, all you have to do is look at the most recent data from Urban Nation, which is one of the leading firms on the Toronto pre-construction market, you know, they found out that 70% of, of Toronto pre-con investors are, in, are pre-con buyers are in fact investors. So 70% of that market. And a lot of these pre-con investors are coming up with their down payments by leveraging the existing equity they have from other real estate assets that they own or through the stock market, et cetera. And so as they start to see, you know, not only rising interest rates curbing some of that sentiment of, hey, maybe I should sort of sit back and wait and see how this plays out to all of a sudden, hey, I can't really re-leverage my house because the housing market's down 10, 15%. So that's gonna start to curb a lot of uh, future investment, I think, in that market, which is particularly important because over the past five years, over the past five years, eight over 80% of real GDP growth in Canada has been derived from residential housing and consumption. Uh, so this is a huge driver of the economy. That's why I said, I think these 50 basis point rate hikes are going to really slam the brakes, not only on the economy, uh, on, but on housing and ultimately inflation as well. So it will be, I think, mission accomplished sooner rather than later. But uh, there's, there is certainly more pain to come, uh, which kind of brings me to, again, I think we're seeing most of the softness playing out is really in, 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 on, in the GTA and in the Ontario market, which is ultimately the most, I think, systemically important housing market for policymakers. It is our largest housing market uh, from a, from a basically provincial level, uh, you know, some, some great commentary here from Ron Butler, who is really, uh, they're actually one of the largest broker mortgage broker firms in Canada. Uh, he's got appraisal failures reaching close to 50%. Uh, 
uh, where basically, you know, people are paying ultimately too much for new housing right now. And the appraisals are coming in short because the appraisals, the appraisers are, are, are being more cautious right now. They're a little bit worried about valuations. And so this is causing some deals to, to falter. And we're seeing obviously more and more uh, offers coming through with subject to financing clauses. Uh, but it's funny because the appraisals never, ever, ever, ever miss on the way up, right? There's no, there's no price too high that you can pay. The appraisal always hit in a bull market, and of course, it's in the, it's in the bear market when conditions change. That all of a sudden the appraiser go, hmm, maybe it's not worth as much as as it as I as you paid. So uh, that's just kind of the cyclical nature uh, of of this, and it's the same thing with bankers, right? I mean, they're happy to lend you money uh, in a bull market, but they're they're quick to sort of rain rain credit growth in uh, as the market starts to slow and so i think that's kind of the the next leg here that we'll be watching for um but you know again we're seeing this um i think a lot of the the sort of softness as well is is we're seeing and i'm hearing personally more and more deals in in vancouver here where developers and builders alike are starting to pull back because you have to ask like as a builder developer what is the risk reward for you right now so you look at and say well these guys are intent on raising interest rates they want to basically slow and and push arguably push prices down in the housing market at least temporarily uh my construction costs are still elevated the risk reward it doesn't really look that great and so i kind of point you to you know a recent example i was looking at was a you know single family house on a great building lot in in north vancouver um i had some clients looking at this and you know this was like a lot that was priced at two two six and i figured yeah you know what this thing is probably worth two seven this is about three 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 and a half weeks ago um, you know, based on neighboring lots selling, um, you know, this one had a 95 foot frontage versus the, the neighboring property had just sold several months ago with an 80 foot frontage for, you know, $2.6 million. So I was like, well, based on that, yeah, the market's softening, but I mean, this is still, you can't find 95 foot frontage lots. This thing ended up having 30, 40 groups through it, but still like no, everyone just got basically cold feet. Nobody offered, they take a price reduction and then they ultimately sell uh, for about two point, just over two point three five zero. So again, at the top of that market, that house is going for minimum, uh, minimum two seven five, and just sold for two three five. And that's because that house would have pre predominantly sold to a builder, probably a spec builder, that would have knocked down that house, built it, and sold it off for five million dollars. But again, you have to start looking at a build as a builder. What is the risk reward? Will I be able to sell this house in eighteen months? at five million or is it a four and a half? And so that, that's why you're starting to see, I think some of that. We've also heard stories of developers uh, trying to launch you know, high rise luxury towers in Vancouver that are pausing, uh, pausing launches just because again, can they sell enough? Can they, can they go through the launching process? Can we launch this project? We have to sell roughly 50, you know, minimum 50 to 60% of the building to get construction financing. If we launch and we can't sell 50 to 60% in that 12 month window that the regulations allow us to do that, well, then we just wasted all this time and money and effort uh, for an unsuccessful launch. So let's just pause it and wait for market conditions. So I think you're gonna see um, new housing supply, new housing starts are gonna start to drop off, I think rather significantly moving forward as the investors pull back and as the developer builders weigh their risk reward. So that's what I'm looking at this week. As always, hope that helped and we'll see you next week.